Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of my Storm fans out there. It's me, your captain speaking. If you give me just one moment, I'm going to make sure that you, me, and everybody else that you know and care about know that this stream is happening right now. I'll see you just in one moment. Hello everybody, welcome to another Thursday night stream. You're gonna see something familiar here. If it ain't broke, why fix it? The Epic Storm version 15.6 is what we took to Eternal Weekend and what Bryant topped forward with Etern at Eternal Weekend. And honestly, we've toyed around with an, a few things, uh, but this is just, this is great. And hey, Jason, it's good to see you and Spicy MTG. Or, I don't know if you want me to use your real name or not. And uh, Dominique, everybody's here and we're going to get the party started. I know that Bryant has played around with something from uh, MKM Whale of the Forgotten. Is that from MKM? I think so. Um, but it really didn't work out very well. It's currently a members only video that released, I think today, that you can actually check out after this stream or wait until it goes public if you're not a member. Although if you want to support us, that's always appreciated. And honestly, the Epic Storm as the galvanic relay deck of the format, also playing Beseech the Mirror, Song of Creation, Gaia's Will, this is this is a tried and true legacy storm staple. Um, yeah, not much has changed. We're, we're still just running it back with a classic. I'm already queued up because I'm good like that. Not that I uh, missed it last week or anything like that. You don't have to check, that's okay. Um, but by the way, while we queue up for our first match, we're now sponsored by KMC. You'll see over the top of my head, a, an ad with a promo code um, STORM20 you can use at checkout. So we'll see about some awesome new sponsors in the future. I'm really excited because I'm going to get some... I used uh, Perfect Hard sleeves for a lot of things and now um, I get to use them again and they're just even that much better. And we already are here for round number one, which is great. We're playing up against Game Maker on the draw. This is not a keepable hand. It's really close. If this guy as well was a land, I would snap this off. Unfortunately, this is a mulligan. This one 
is fine. Um, I'll bottom the guy as well, which is a problem with the first hand, and we'll see where things go. And uh, our opponent on the play has uh, kept, oh no, they mulligan to six, okay. Polluted Delta, Underground Sea, Fonsies? Ponder, okay, I'm okay with this. Um, <clears throat> I think that I'm going to ponder. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is play a Lotus Petal and play a Lion's Eye Diamond. I realize that um, I am a Galvanic Relay deck. That's kind of the point of today. We're gonna try to showcase Galvanic Relay as much as possible, but they are a discard deck and I don't wanna get caught with my pants down, if you know what I mean. So it's an interesting phrase to choose. We're gonna go with it. I'm gonna keep this Brainstorm Cabal Ritual. Um, I want the Brainstorm actually. I don't care about the rest of the cards. Maybe this is actually just a shuffle. I think that this might just be a shuffle. I only want one of the cards and we are given a Taiga for our uh, disciplined shuffle there, but it's okay. Now we're drawing fresh off the top and our opponent who uh, I believe shuffled their first ponder casts another one. We'll see what they choose to do with this one. Mm. No shuffle and a tropical island. This might be uh, beans control, uh, Sultai beans. And in that case, I am going to fire off this brainstorm right now. Um, they could have something like Spell Pierce, and I would be happy casting a Veil of Summer for that. They don't. Okay, so I'm pretty okay with the number of Veils in hand. I think that we can do with one or potentially two fewer. I, I don't hate the idea of thought seizing this turn. Um, what if I keep uh, one veil, one thought seize? They have five cards in hand. I also could just like get rid of this taiga and that might be better. I might be protecting this bit of interaction and then seeing where things go in the future uh, with like uh, one more Veil of Summer protected. I don't know, we're gonna see. Okay, oh, this is at least four color. Dark Ritual, is this Doomsday? This looks like Doomsday, okay. Uh, this is the, the One Ring Doomsday deck that's Kind of, I think this is a doomsday. I could be wrong. Uh, Newton, hello. Uh, Islanders versus lightning. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you mean by that, Jason. Um, not sure. Okay, so I'm gonna take the Teferi here. They have a Lotus Petal that they could use to power it out, but also I have Veil of Summers for these Force of Wills. I think that just being able to protect and not have to worry about Teferi is the, is the get. Um, I'm not sure about the amount of discard our opponent is going to play. Uh, NHL. Uh, okay, so I live really close to the Blues Stadium, which is kind of neat, but I, I don't really know much about hockey. Um... Okay. So, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to pause, let my opponent think that I'm mulling over a potential lethal line, and then fire off a wasteland. Um, or a wasteland, a Veil of Summer. I don't know why I said wasteland. I'm playing a Veil of Summer that they may be forced to interact with. No, no pun intended. And if not, that's fine. I can just pass the turn. 
if they fight over this, um, I am moderately incentivized to fight back. Okay, so force, pitch, force. I am going to fight back. I get, assuming this resolves, two draws. Uh, dark ritual is moderately good. I would like a red source here. Brainstorm is not bad. We'll see where things go. Okay, so that ended up being excellent. This is my red source. So I can put back uh, Dark Ritual, Lion's Eye Diamond, and then imprint the Veil of Summer to the Chrome Mox. Misty gets a Taiga. So let's go with Dark Ritual, Lion's Eye Diamond. And we get a really nice relay. An excellent Galvanic relay here, actually. Now we are shuffling away two cards that I would like in the relay, but that's going to be fine. Uh, I have two green sources. Let's just pick up this Volcanic Island as our red source. And hold control. Bryant was suffering holding control with a new PC. I don't have a new PC. My control is not lost. So we're good there. I would like to use this ability and I would like to get a Galvanic Relay for seven. Here we go. So I can just F6 through the rest of my turn and see what Relay brings us. I think that this is a pretty good showing against a, well, potentially unfair blue deck. Uh, ponder, Relay, Brainstorm, Dark Ritual, Beseech the Mirror, Dark Ritual, Burning Wish. Yep, that's pretty good. I think that that's going to work wonders for our, uh, our next turn. I might even be able to... Oh, Brainstorm's a good pickup from our opponent. I might even be able to... Uh, Burning Wish for a Thoughtseize, and then go into a Beseech Gaia's Will kill. Um, I don't know. Our opponent has three cards in hand. Um, they've brainstormed, so I don't necessarily know about this Dark Ritual. Uh, but our draw, a Lion's Eye Diamond, that's pretty good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is play this Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm going to cast some Dark Rituals. And what I can do is um, Burning Wish, get a Thoughtseize, and then Thoughtseize our opponent. And then we have a real, oh, Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer of your own. Okay. That's a spicy meatball. Nice. Uh, okay, that resolves. Uh, I can't say I was expecting that. So what I can do is um, brainstorm and beseech relay um there's a few things that i can do let's start off with um hmm. well what i can do is just put lethal goblins into play and i can do that by casting beseech the mirror storm seven um eight would be the burning wish and then nine would be the empty the warrens and i have four mana to do all of that right now um, I think that's what I'm going to do. So let's crack for red and cast a Beseech the Mirror with Bargain. Sack the Chrome Mox. And I'm going to get a Burning Wish here. Uh, Burning Wish, cast it. Why not song? I cannot actually win through Veil of Summer here. Um, so that's why not song. 
I could, I could make a ridiculous amount of goblins, but they're going to be just as dead, and I would rather have the song... Um, I mean, they're going to be just as dead. I don't know. Okay, so that's 18 goblins. They're at 18 life. They are casting another Veil of Summer. Wow, okay, they just had double Veil. Uh, oh, Will Song, then Grape Shot. I could Grape Shot. Yeah, I probably should have gone for a Grape Shot. You know what, Bryant? You are correct. Uh, Newton, you are also correct. Uh, and Jason, I hope that we are uh, able to decease our opponent. Yeah, I definitely miss the grape shot lethal there. Sometimes I just forget that that's the, a tool that we have. You've played Magic before, second time yesterday. Yeah, I know. I saw your uh, Whale of the Forgotten. That worked out really well for you. Mm hmm. Okay, if we die. Okay, this might be a one ring here. And it's going to be fun. Um. Oh, well, I, I was bringing up the hype for uh, new members, entice people to become members for us. That'd be kind of fun. Let's see the, uh, the new tech. I guess you did blur it out in the... <clears throat> yeah, sometimes we think Veil is the One Ring. You are right, Newton. Veil is not the One Ring. The One Ring is the One Ring, and the One Ring is in play now, and they have the ability to have five cards in hand. Um, I am assuming that this is Doomsday. Dark Ritual, if they Doomsday now, that's gonna be really, oh, okay. Interesting. And they didn't keep the one with a bunch of counters on it. Do they wanna draw now? Okay, so they have three cards in hand. Um, hmm. If we lose, this is definitely on me. Uh, hello, Sir Noble. All right, I think that what I'm gonna do is ritual into this relay. I think that that's a decent option right now. Just filter these two cards into next turn, uh, which is gonna give me a Song of Creation and the land to cast it. That's kind of fun. Okay, I don't have the ability to do any damage to my opponent, so I am not going to attack. Um, <clears throat> okay, our opponent is at 16. They're doing plenty of damage to themselves, I suppose. They have six cards in hand, and they're fetching a land, they're at 15. We're tied, we're obviously not losing the game. Okay, Tundra, this is a wild, I don't know what, is going on. Dark Ritual is interesting. Okay, they've got another One Ring, for sure. For sure, for sure. Uh, they've got a lot of cards in hand. <clears throat> they have a, they've been able to chain the One Ring successfully, I must say. Um, okay. Here is an opportunity to... I don't know. I don't know where we're going to go with this, but we can go places with this. Green, red, colorless. And I will cast the Mox Opal because we're going to discard it. Uh, and okay, I can discard these two cards. It ended up just being a Mox Opal. Okay. Islander scored. Congrats, Jason. Sounds like that's your team. Okay. Now, if they have four One Rings, they certainly can do things. They have another land they're fetching. I don't know if this is fetching to thin or if they're just hard casting a doomsday. They are hard casting a doomsday. We have almost certainly lost this game. 
to my inability to recognize Veil vale of Summer is not the end of the world and I can just grape shot. Okay, great start to the league. Uh, that's okay, we, we can fight back. This seems like a doomsday pile that is not the end of the world. All right, let's take a look at this pile. Um, veils, dark rituals. Wow, they're fitting a little bit of everything in here, aren't they? Wow. Okay. One singleton to fairy time raveler. Uh, oh, I know. I'm just looking at this pile of cards, Bryant. Okay. Um, we are deceased. We can just go to sideboarding. Interesting build. They even have days. This is just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's just bring in thought seizes and I'm going to cut a mox opal and a chrome mox. And we're going to leave it at that. Um, yeah. I'm not going to bring in carpets. I think that that's... Um, a little too grindy for this combo mirror of sorts. So we're just gonna leave it as a simple sideboarding and play tighter and get the game. So we're gonna do better. We, sh we should have won that. Anybody else with a competent uh, combo streak would, won would have won game one. And uh, as long as this gets shuffled away with this brainstorm, I like this hand. So I'm gonna keep this. Um, the idea is to potentially just ponder into a nice relay and keep it going. So I'm going to keep this, um, ever thought to board stifle? Yeah, right. Um, not quite sure that's what we want. Although I guess we could technically stifle the discard trigger on Song of Creation. The value. Um, okay, I'm going to shuffle this. We're looking for land number two. We find a Beseech, which is fine. Uh, this Brainstorm will hopefully do some work. Uh, yeah, Stifle the Thoughts as Oracle. That's, that's not, perhaps not the best way to win this matchup. But it is certainly a choice. Um, okay, so they certainly could have... Days or spell pierce or fluster storm here. Uh, I have to play into it because I'm looking for. Hey, there we go, land number two, and I can put back tendrils and song of creation immediately, and just hold up a veil of summer. I'll shuffle my uh, cards in a little bit in my upkeep, presumably. Ooh, end of turn brainstorm. Okay. Mm hmm. If we get another zero, if we get a land or a ritual of sorts, um, well, as long as it's not Cabal Ritual, if we get a dark ritual, then we're, we're pretty up on this relay plan. Although if we get dark ritual, then I think we have a lethal Beseech the Mirror that's protected, so that's also pretty good. Okay, Cycle Alorian revealed. They have a Shuffle Brainstorm and a Ponder. Okay, well, they are using all of their mana. Uh, the whole buffalo is being used up by our opponent. Six cards in hand. They're gonna draw their Ponder and have seven, unless they drop a Lotus Petal or something like that. And they chose not to shuffle their library. Hey, there's that Lotus Petal we were talking about. Okay, this kind of looks like and smells like a Veil of Summer. At least that's what it thinks it says to me. Uh, Jason, Edge. Okay. Um, burning Wish. Okay. Uh, not the end of the world, I could well, I can't Burning Wish for a Thoughtseize. Uh, they're all in the board. Um, and... 
Okay, we're just gonna pass, add, done. Oh, okay. Yeah, they get their third land drop. I would like one of those. If they end up, is this the one ring? Okay, that's fine. Galvanic Relay kind of circumvents uh, the one ring um, by allowing me to combo past their protection from everything and then untap and actually kill them. Um, so we can see how that works. Another Veil of Summer. Okay, well, uh, what I'm going to do is... Just cast a Veil of Summer. It's either cast the Veil of Summer or just discard the Veil of Summer. Um, and this way I can potentially force some interaction out of it. And I got a daze out of them. And I am gonna pay. Do they have a double daze? Or are they just gonna let it go? No, nope. they're digging for an answer. I don't, you don't need to answer this one. Oh, they got a force? Okay, we got a force and a daze out of that with just one Veil of Summer. And we were gonna discard it to hand size. Uh, obviously this is hindsight is twenty twenty. That worked out super well, uh, but I still think that that's the right play. Uh, obviously I'm not holding up Veil for a Thoughtseize or a piece of discard from my opponent, but we didn't see a lot of discard from them in game one. Uh, so I think it's fine. Are they gonna own tab and kill us? Okay, well, might not matter. Using multiple layers of protection is a valid choice. Yes, absolutely. We were, we were wrapped with protection, but our opponent might not matter. Might not care about our protection and they've got more than enough disruption to get them across the finish line. No problemo. This active ring and three cards in hand has me moderately worried. Uh, they have yet to make a land drop. So I think I might have punted this match. We could have at least forced a game three. In which case my, you know, turn one thought seizes, a play set of thought seizes in the, in the, in the grip could have been really nice. Alas. We are making a pile. What did they pitch to the force of will? It was a ponder. Okay, that's fine. Um, we shall see where this goes. Uh, okay, got a text from a very important person at work. I will probably respond to it when I uh, run an ad in between these. Um, okay. Draw with a one ring. Is this gonna be Cycler LED go for the win? Probably. If they have a Cycler, there's the Cycler, then LED, and they can consider, we know that they have that. Oh, they just put a couple of cyclers in the pile. Okay. There's another one and they have won the game. Okay. Well, I can definitely see where we uh, kind of dropped the ball on that one. Doomsday is a rough matchup. This Doomsday is better. It is not Turbo Doomsday. Um, their mana is horrendous, but uh, I definitely punted round or game one and then got uh, kind of handled on the draw or on the play. So let's cue into round number two and let me tell you a little bit about an awesome sponsor of the channel, Card Hoarder. If you want to rent the deck, kind of like I'm doing, actually I own the deck, but if you want to rent the deck, then you can get a Card Hoarder loan account and there's awesome support there. I've been using Card Hoarder for a long, long time. And let me tell you about that while we queue in to round number two.
With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. And here we are back for our queuing for round number two. And let's just take a look at this. I've, the, 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 we kind of added Consigned to Oblivion as our burning wishable bounce spell, because you can wish for the Oblivion, the sorcery, and then use the instant Consign to get rid of problematic permanence. Whale of the Forgotten is a sorcery. Now, which uh, side of this black line we play it in is a little bit up to... S well, okay. We can talk about that after round number two. Um, you know, Jason, uh, Legacy MKM cards, maybe? I'm having a hard time remembering which ones are useful uh, or potentially interesting, but not really much on the combo side, that's for sure. All right, I'm going to mulligan this hand. It's not anything that we want. And this seems pretty okay. I'm gonna keep this. I'm actually gonna bottom the Beseech the Mirror. Um, I think that this is a Galvanic Relay hand. And then we have Burning Wish as an alternative. I would love to draw a Lion's Eye Diamond right now. Uh, the green one mana spell, um, maybe. Crime Novelist is pretty good. Yeah, they're not bad. Uh, yeah, the, the one drop does seem interesting. I can't remember what it's gonna pull up. Scryfall. Um, set MKM. I love Scryfall's search function. And then I can... Uh, Okay, ooh, okay, we are playing a basic swamp and passing the turn. Uh, Beseech the mirror, okay, well, didn't even matter. What I'm gonna do is get a volcanic island. I realize, I realize that I have, eh, you know what? I'm gonna be better. I'll get an underground sea and ponder. We have red mana in the form of lotus petal and mox opal, so I'll actually get a black source. That probably is better. Um. Okay, okay. So, black mana, this might be a cycle troll of Kaza Doom and then reanimate it kind of a turn. Um, I don't want to hold open the Lotus Petal for a Veil of Summer, but I think I might have to. No, no, I'm just gonna leave it be. I'm gonna grab my land and just pass the turn. So, yeah. Oh, hey, how's it going? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, ROM. Uh, those were those were some pretty interesting games. The, uh, I, I didn't catch that I could have just killed you through that Veil of Summer with Grape Shot. Um, I punted round one, or game one, pretty heavily. Um, which was just my bad. I was just thinking Veil of Summer and the One Ring were equivalent and just not realizing that I could grape shot you. Um, but then you definitely ha very handily got game two. So uh, I could have forced a decider, ended up deciding to just punt it away anyway. Ooh, ooh, okay. So these are the surveil lands and I'm pretty excited to see how these work. They're amazing in modern, and they might actually have some functionality in legacy as well. Um, kind of, kind of fun. Okay, so we're going to draw a veil of summer. There's a ponder on top of the library that I don't care about, and what I'm gonna do is, uh, I mean, relay for relay for. Th three is not particularly good. Um, 
What I could do is just draw the ponder and then next turn ponder looking for a zero or another land. Um, and right now I can just hold up Veil of Summer. I don't hate that actually. Yeah, I think that that's fine. Um, okay, Nathan, you'd wager that the cloak artifact that bounces itself is likely legacy playable? Okay, interesting. Yeah, I could see that. And then... Uh, Maybe for like grindy four color control matchups. Yeah, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. I am excited to have another set that doesn't have absolute bangers in it for eternal formats. I feel like that's fairly reasonable. You know what? I probably should have fetched. Um, that's all right. I wanted to draw this ponder, but now I'm thinking opposition agent. So, oops. If we can get them to commit to an Orcish Bowmaster, that would be great. But instead, ooh, okay. So this is interesting. What I can do is get, this is a really good ponder. Um, what I can do is get them, I can ignore the um, potential opposition agent right now by just playing out Lotus Petals. Um, so that's all good. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to just do that. I realize, um, I just need to play around opposition agent and I get the lion's eye diamond and beseech the mirror, which are not bad at all. Um, Thoughtseize is pretty good. Yeah, this is an interesting, like the underground mortuary is an interesting choice. I'm not sure what's going on here, but uh, Gaia's will is kind of tough. That's kind of the deal, isn't it? Um, Fonseca, probably reanimator. Uh, you saw a list like this today. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. And it's really good against beans, you guess? Yeah, that's, I guess it's fair. I don't know. I, I'm interested to see what the green splash is for and why we're working with surveil lands when you have buy you as an option I am fetching immediately um, and not giving them a chance to opposition agent me because that was a mistake on my part hmm worldly tutor what um is this I don't even know what this is we're gonna see what they tutor uh so they can surveil whatever they tutor into the graveyard immediately. This is like an entomb. This is a build your own entomb. Uh, green for smog. Okay, okay. So Grizzlebrand, interesting. World Gorger plus the land. Surveil everything into the graveyard. Green for smog. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's an interesting strat. Um, yeah, Worldly Tutor is an interesting one. It's played very uh, sparsely, let's say that, all right. Uh, post sideboard, yeah, sure, that makes sense. Okay, Lotus Petal is good. I'll have Metal Craft. And I'm assuming that they're going to Animate Dead or Reanimate a Grizzlebrand. <clears throat> There's the Animate Dead. They're at 19 life. They got plenty of life to work with. I can just pass the turn. Uh, the goal here, ooh, Underground Mortuary again. They got a whole play set. Wow, uh, presumably. Ooh, they're not even, they're not even doing anything about drawing cards. Okay, so I've got all of mine. That's enough Beseech the Mirrors, wow. Uh, okay, let's play a land. Let's play a Lion's Eye Diamond. Let's play a Lotus Petal. Uh, now, I'm gonna hold on to these cards, the Thoughtseize, the Beseech the Mirrors, all of that good stuff. I'm going to work on a um, Echo of the Eons here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I cannot, I cannot peer into the abyss right now. So echo it is. Um, 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tap the opal. I realize that I'm gonna lose metalcraft. Uh should I tap the opal? I should probably tap the opal. Uh yeah, it's kind of close. It's either leaving up the opal to tap for whatever I need, but I have the lotus petal to tap for whatever I need, so it's fine. And I uh got everything I wanted. So we're all good there. And we're gonna just echo into a nice win. So here, no imprint. I cannot imprint anything. And let's go with a thought seize really quick. Okay, so this is just like Entomb Reanimate. This is just a nice little cute worldly tutor package. So you get multiple Entombs, which is the thing that you care the most about in Reanimate. You want to put things into the graveyard. Um, so yeah, let's take that Reanimate and then I can just bargain up this Mox Opal and get a Tendrils. Now, I'm not gonna say it. Um, until these start resolving. Okay, they could have Veil of Summer. They're holding up a green mana. I didn't think that that was gonna be the case, but they certainly could have dug to um, Veil of Summer. So, that was fun. Interesting deck. Uh, the Worldly Tutor kind of build your own entomb. Fun little fun little quirk of the matchup. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of a couple of Galvanic Relays and I'm going to bring in Thought Seizes. And we're going to call that good. Quick, easy sideboarding. We don't need the Echoing Truths. That's not how we win the game. We are not the control deck here. So, I'm expecting them to not board into the smog, the chain of smog deck. Uh, mostly just because I think that their reanimate plan is better against a combo deck that's not going to have any graveyard hate. Who would have thought? Uh, just be a little bit more proactive. They certainly could, um, but I, I think it's fine. We don't we don't need to plan for. A chain of smog combo deck, <clears throat> which would essentially just be bringing in the echo, uh, echoing truths. So I'm not worried about it. All right, what does this hand do? Well, I'm gonna keep it. It brainstorms on one, and it's got a bunch of abilities here. I'm gonna keep this against the heavy discard deck. Uh, and see, oh, they've mulliganed to five. Okay, yes. Uh, I might even just thought seize them on turn one uh, without the brainstorm, depending on what they end up doing. I don't know. Obviously, uh, they could, okay, thought seize me, sure. Uh, they could still entomb reanimate off of a land in a dark ritual or a lotus petal and be just fine, but we'll see. Uh, Jason, you are having a fantastic night. Your Islanders are doing amazing. Um, okay, so they very accurately decided to cut me off of my Mox Opal. Uh, it didn't end up working, <laughs> uh, but that was a really good choice. So I'm going to play out my Lion's Eye Diamond and my Mox Opal, and then I'm going to hold priority as I cast this Chrome Mox. The imprint on the stack, I'm going to brainstorm. I would like to... Well, that Song of Creation is interesting. Um, I'm going to put back Song of Creation and brainstorm. Uh, yeah. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm gonna, um, wait, this is a win? Oh man, did I screw it up? Oh yes, I could have brainstormed into the Beseech the Mirror. Bryant, you're right. I saw it just a second too slowly. Um, 
We're not going to talk about it. Man, I just missed that. <sighs> okay. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to be disruptive and then hope that our um, song of creation is going to get the win. So that's what we're going to pivot to. Uh, oh, they do have the Chain of Smog. Okay, Fonseca, you're right. Uh, I was not expecting that, though. Uh, okay, so let's just take the Chain of Smog, I guess. Unless I want to take the Thoughtseize. Like, this Chrome Mox is my fourth mana, potentially, to cast the um, Song of Creation. Uh... Obviously, it's going to be a couple of turns from now. I'm drawing a brainstorm and then the song underneath it. Um, yeah, I, I think that I should probably just take the Thoughtseize. Okay. Well, we're going to gloss over the fact that... So the line that Bryant is talking about um, is I could put... Uh, Beseech the Mirror and something else on top of my library and then Brainstorm, hold priority, crack the Lion's Eye Diamond um, for Black, 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 Beseech the Mirror and um, call it good. The imprint under Chrome Mox would have been the Song of Creation for the blue that I needed for the Brainstorm. Would have been real nice. However, I'm just going to brainstorm here, find the Song of Creation and two unknowns. And okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Chrome Mox and the Song of Creation on top. And then I've got a Misty Rainforest here. And what I can do is draw the Song of Creation, cast it, and Chrome Mox to start a nice chain going. Uh, they have an Entomb, okay. They have Chain of Smog in hand. So let's see what happens. Uh, I think I feel pretty okay. They are passing, okay, cool. They Entombed an Atraxa, not a Grizzlebrand. I'm gonna get an underground C, and this is gonna be red, blue, green, colorless. Song of Creation. Now, something that I can do is cast the Chrome Mox and then guess at a color to sacrifice my Lion's Eye Diamond for. However, I'm not in a particularly desperate position yet. I don't need to win this turn because our opponent is not threatening a lot right now. So I'm just going to go for what I have. Uh, obviously didn't quite work out the way that I wanted it to, but that is fine. Uh, I'm gonna imprint the Burning Wish because if I need to discard something and they have like a surgical extraction, I don't wanna get extracted with my Burning Wishes. So we could have guessed for the Lion's Eye Diamond and it would have been black or red and I would have actually guessed right regardless of which color I picked because I was going to draw a castable red or a, a black spell, but that's fine. Now we have a Thoughtseize. So I'm gonna Thoughtseize my opponent and start the chain all over again. And we're drawing two cards, and we are doing well. We are doing quite well. Okay, I'm going to take their Grief. They're left with an Archon and a Chain of Smog. I'm going to actually, um, yeah, I'll, I'll wait. I have a Brainstorm, I can Brainstorm Shuffle. This Brainstorms are amazing when you have Song of Creation. So are the Ponders. All right, I'll put back a Chrome Mox and a Veil of Summer. And what I can do is all roads lead to Rome here, essentially. Um, 
Grief will never have a target with Song and Play, but I, I mean, Chain of Smog is pretty worthless too. Um, I guess it's they're out to combo, but that's fine. We are winning this game. And I will just keep all of this. This is all lethal all the time. And we are good to go. Um, we just get to click at our leisure uh, and we will eventually build up enough storm and we don't even need to do anything other than wait for uh, tendrils or beseech into the tendrils. Whichever one happens first, turns out we are just going to draw it naturally and no imprint because you are deceased. I guess there are 18 anyway. And here we go. This is a nice one actually because uh, if our library is super low, then we can stack the tendrils copies before we draw out our library, which is fun. So we are in fact one and one Joe, uh, or Jason, excuse me. And uh, we're gonna move into round number three. And just as a reminder, right above my head, KMC, 10% off if you use code STORM20, or STORM10, excuse me. I think I said STORM20 before. But we're playing Tendrils of Agony, so it's STORM10. We don't need any additional storm there. So get your hard, perfect fits or your KMC mat sleeves. They're really nice. Um, I've been wanting to switch over. I'm making my way through a couple of boxes of uh, competitors brand that is not holding up like they used to. And I'm really excited to switch so that I don't have split, uh, split corners and things like that. So let me tell you about Moxfield really quick. Oh, never mind. Here we go. We are into round number three already. I'll tell you about Moxfield in a little bit. We lost the die roll. All right. Uh, <clears throat> we are waiting on our opponent to choose to play or draw and they chose to play. Big surprise. This hand <clears throat> needs some work. Um, it needs a lot of work, and I don't know if this is actually, this is borderline capable. Double Beseech is kind of rough. Three lands is kind of rough. I would take one less of either of those with a functional hand and call it lovely. Our opponent mulligan to six. I'm gonna keep this one just because we have a really nice density of cards that we want to draw, which are lands and cantrips, or action like, uh, not lands, mana and cantrips or action spells. So I think that that's just fine. Unmask, another reanimate opponent, okay. So are they going to take the Lion's Eye Diamond or the Veil of Summer here? I don't know. They're going to take the Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, so if they allow me to untap, then... Okay, so I am holding up Veil of Summer now. That was a good pickup. I really wish I had a bargainable permanent in my hand right about now, but... If we get another zero and another ritual, then we have lethal. So we're actually pretty close. Um, having this veil of summer up is nice protection. This is gonna be a, an entomb. A troll, okay, that's fine. I am okay with that. That is significantly less scary than other reanimate targets. There's that swamp that they just found. And exhum. Okay. All of this is fine. <clears throat> A lot 
lot of reanimate stuff is happening for sure. I am going to fetch here. Um, I'll get an underground C and then draw my card. Uh, since I have another fetch land, I'm not losing out on a brainstorm fetch opportunity to perfectly sculpt my hand. Although my opponent is considering things in my upkeep. Uh, okay, cool. Lotus Petal is a bargainable permanent. I just need a ritual and I have lethal. Um, we're getting really close here, folks. <clears throat> actually might have, re I forgot I had the LED in my yard. I might actually have lethal just now. Um, well, that's nice. We can start off with a ponder just in case. Okay, Lion's Eye Diamond is certainly going to do it. Don't shuffle. Let's take uh, Taiga. Doesn't really matter. Um, and we can, just clicking at random, oops, that's fine. Um, okay, here we go, Beseech the Mirror, cast with bargain. I will bargain away the Lotus Petal. And then what I can do is Beseech the Mirror again I can bargain away the Lion's Eye Diamond, and then I can get a Gaia's Will and cast the Gaia's Will. Okay. And here we go with the Lotus Petal, a Lion's Eye Diamond. Let's get all the artifact mana out first. And then here's a Dark Ritual and bargain away oh, the lion's eye diamond. That's fine. And we get a tendrils of agony on the stack, 13 drills of agony. And <laughs> we get to clinch uh, game one from our opponent. Okay, that's kind of fun. Um, we are handing reanimator uh, something, I don't know. Um, all right, let's see. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna bring in two Thought Seizes and take out two Galvanic Relays. That's it, that's all we need. And call it good. <clears throat> this looks like the mono black reanimator that is kind of floating around here with the trolls and the griefs. It's essentially re rescaminator if you want to meld the grief scam plus reanimate grizzle brand strategies together into some unholy monocolored amalgamation if you want. And for this, our opponent started with seven cards. We've seen grief and unmask, so we know that they have at least. I mean, I would assume that they have a place out of griefs and then unmask on top of that. So five or six pitch discards and some amount of thought seizes. Um, I'm gonna keep this because while our hand doesn't rely on any one card, our ponder and brainstorm can convert into a win pretty quickly. So I'll keep this and we're not going to get discarded into oblivion if we have more cards in hand to discard. At least, I hope not. <clears throat> Starting on a Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual, yikes. The no land hands from Reanimator are always the scariest. Oh, Troll, Swamp. Entomb, okay. Uh, exhume a Grizzlebrand. That 
is pretty good. Not gonna lie. Pretty good. Uh, yikes. <clears throat> we can come back from this. It is not simple. Uh, yeah, now we're going to get discarded into oblivion. Our brainstorm and ponder are likely to go in that order. There's already the brainstorm gone. Uh, oh, they're going to six. Okay. This is a choice they can make. There's the grief taking our ponder, likely. There it goes. Um, they could continue. They've got 10 cards in hand. You just keep going. Yep, grief. Okay. Uh, Joe, we've not played with Leyline of Sanctity. Um, we certainly could because we are no longer an ad nauseum deck. We are a Beseech the Mirror deck and have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to deck building, but we're a Veil of Summer deck. And I get that that doesn't help us on the draw on turn one, but... Um, I feel like it's fine. Um, we are probably just safe to concede here, but for the sake of argument, if I happen to draw exactly, oh, never mind. Okay, we're done. What are they? What are they taking here? Yeah. Okay. There. That was that was the the right pick. Okay. We were handed something. Um, but we, we're the Veil of Summer deck, so like obviously on the draw in turn one, we don't have that protection up, but, uh, this is much better than a Ley Line of Sanctity and every other option, right? Uh, Jared, hey, as a Storm player, am I more afraid of a deck like Green White Depths packing, packing Deafening Silences or Orem's Chance? Um, I would say... I am normally expecting something like Deafening Silence from Green White Depths or Naya Depths. So if they start playing something like Orm's Chant, I'm not going to be prepared for that. Uh, that would that has the gotcha moment for, for sure. Uh, although if I know about it, then I would say Deafening Silence is probably still more worrisome. And then uh, Oof and Teague are obviously just like good Green Sun Zenith packages. Uh, I don't know. They, Depths certainly packs a lot of hate for reasons. Um, mulligan this hand. And it kind of just depends on what they see and how quickly we can get on, on uh, top of our combo. But yeah. I think that deafening silence out of the two, if I expect them in equal, uh, with equal frequency, let's put it that way, right? Let's keep this, put the burning wish back. Um, I think this is a turn one brainstorm hand. Um, if I find a lion's eye diamond, then we're straight ripping. Nope, okay. Well, I'm going to put back Burning Wish and Thoughtseize. And then we'll see what happens. Green, Black, and Rainbow Depths. I like playing Rainbow Depths. I'm not as much of a Fair Depths player. Um, in fact, I would like to build Rainbow Depths in paper. Uh, I've talked to uh, Tom Hep Negator77 a few times, and he's always a pleasant chap. Not that he plays magic much anymore. Ooh, they're griefing or unmasking themselves, and they've got a reanimate. Okay. Well, this Thoughtseize is not going to do anything. Um, anything at all. Uh, so what I can do, uh, no, this is too many turns. 
Just another turn one monster. Um, hmm. So I don't think that I'm going to get enough turns to do it because this is nine. Um, I don't have a Veil of Summer. I have a Thoughtseize instead. So I'll be taking nine right now. I'll be drawing the Burning Wish. And what I could do is um, Dark Ritual, Thoughtseize, Burning Wish. Um, that's four total spells, including the, the Tendrils of Agony. Uh, it's not going to be good enough. I could... I can't get an Echo of Eons and go to discard. Uh, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'm three short. Um, we could discard the Echo. Is that enough mana? One, two, three, four, five, six. So Burning Wish. Yeah, actually. Okay, yeah. That's right. No, uh, I can discard my, I can use Thoughtseize to discard myself. Um, we'll see how that goes, but they certainly have the option of discarding me in the meantime, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I was thinking that, oh yeah, I could burning wish and then make them discard me, but, uh, that's 18 damage by the time that all happens. So, oh wait, no, I'm discarding this anyway. Ugh. That's right. Yeah, Newton, you got it. Okay, so if I stacked this differently and had a uh, Burning Wish here instead, we would have been fine and would have been able to Echo next turn. However, uh, I was not expecting a turn one monster from them two turns in a row, or two games in a row, um, but we're going to concede. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. Reanimator got us once, and we got them once. We were trading back and forth. Um, Nathan, Maverick is definitely my least favorite legacy deck. It's like, let's play all the weakest synergies possible and lacks the prison elements of Blood Moon or Death and Taxes. Yeah, that's fine. I think Maverick is really cool conceptually. Um, because the synergies, while they're, like, weak, um, they make up for it in terms of just, like, flexibility, uh, in a fair plan, right? They have to make up their combo matchup somehow, but, you know, you know what I mean. Okay, uh, while we queue up for round number four, I'm going to tell you about Moxfield. If you want, you can click the link in the description below. It'll take you to the deck list, and then you can do whatever you want with it. And um, Moxfield is just a really super awesome tool. You all know and love it. Let me tell you about it, or let me have Bryant tell you about it while we queue up into our less uh, penultimate match. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Alrighty, well, we are still waiting for our round for opponent, and let's just see where things go. Um, I was able to play a local win a duel. Oh, never mind. Here we go. Ooh, the Max Sheezy. Okay. Well, this is kind of a tough hand. I'm going to mulligan it. It's not bad per se. Um, we're lacking the third black source. Uh, this is a song of creation hand for sure. Maybe I don't hate this. We're only one black source away from a song. You know what? I'm going to keep this. This is fine. I get that. We're, we're going to imprint Gaia's will to the Chrome Mox if we don't find anything better. Um, and see what happens. 
Oh, our opponent uh, ended up playing land in their second main phase. Thoughtseize. Well, that's our third black source. Um, okay, so one, two, three, four. I can just beseech the mirror right now. Um, hmm. Oh, Newton Bant Nightfall with uh, Knight of the Reliquary and uh, what's the blue enchantment? I don't know. Uh, I don't think that I'm going to put a Song of Creation into play right. It's tempting. It's very tempting. I'm just going to ponder. Arid Mesa is very... In okay, Dark Ritual. That's excellent. Um, how about... Uh, how about we just... Can we win the game now? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we can just win the game now. How about that? How about a ponder into a turn one win? And I'm still leading on the chrome boxes like a chump. I really should have started with that lotus petal, but that's okay. I learned the error of my ways. Retreat to Coral Helm. Thank you, Newton. Yeah, that was a fun one. That one's a very fun one. Okay, cast with bargain. Bargain away the chrome box. And Beseech the Mirror. Bar oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. There's a... Hmm. I imprinted the guy as well. I am playing in an interesting game right now. So we're going to not make this worse. And... I really just sacked that Lotus Petal for no reason. Okay. Hmm. Well, we are going to really lean into this Galvanic Relay for our uh, thumbnail, right? Ooh, Mox Opal. Is this Painter? Is this just Painter? This is like Mono Red Painter or, or some color combination Painter? Uh, certainly interesting. Hmm. How many fetch lands are in Painter? I'm not really sure. LK, there's two. There's definitely two today. Um, which is fine. We're allowed a couple. Not that many. Not too many, but... Uh, enough. If this is Painter, I'm just, I have to, like, there's, we only hit Lion's Eye Diamond as far as actual mana, so I have to play into it with this Echo of Eons because reasons. This is going to be tough. Yep. Uh, Joe, I think that you're correct. Ooh. Or Rakdos Painter. Or this is, uh... Okay, I'll take an Orcish Bowmasters. Yeah, Orcish Bowmasters is fine. Um, not Pyroblast. Not Pyroblast. Okay, so... That's all good. Uh, yep. That's fine. And what I can do now is turn off auto yields. Um, hmm. What can I do here? I can imprint a uh, beseech the mirror lotus petal 
I can Lotus Petal, crack a Veil of Summer, see what I, or cast a Veil of Summer, see what I end up drawing. Um, hmm. I'm one mana away from besieging into a Song of Creation. Uh, two mana away from actually doing it with Veil, which would be the thing that would allow me to win the game. Well, let's see. I can hit a Lion's Eye Diamond here. Should not be the end of the world. Okay. Burning Wish is not it. All right. Well, let's move to game number two and against what I'm assuming is Rakdos Painter. I have a sideboard guide up right here. Uh, Painter, we're gonna take uh, these six cards and bring out these six cards. Yeah? Yeah. We don't need the Veil of Summers uh, against Pyroblasts. That's not an axis we need to be fighting on. Um, thought seizes are going to be more important for a mess of potential mind break traps that they have or trinospheres or things like that. I would like to play first though. And I'm going to keep this hand. I kind of like this. We get to cantrip several times underneath an orcish bowmaster to set everything up and we have a beseech the mirror okay what i'm gonna do is hide it under this ponder now that does mean that they're likely to take the dark ritual but uh dark ritual is more replaceable than beseech the mirror in my current hand i'll be okay with that An ancient tomb and lotus petal. We've seen. What are we doing here? Magus of the Moon. Okay. Well, this Chrome Mox can imprint a ponder and continue cantripping, which is not bad. Um, there's another land on top. Obviously not the most amazing thing so this ponder is likely to shuffle unless it finds some really amazing cards underneath those are kind of amazing cards right because i can burning wish for a grape shot and grape shot kills the magus uh and then i can combo off from there yeah Chromox, Burning Wish. Yep, I'll take the, where is it? Grape Shot. Okay, I remember the Grape Shot now. So yeah, Newton, whenever you play MTGO, you always get someone playing blue with Stifle or someone non-blue deck Mind Break Trap. Yeah, that's, it can really be tough. I mean, the leagues are just super random. Um, they could be a little bit of everything, and you really don't know until you actually queue into them what it's going to be, which is always kind of exciting. Oh, oh, we're playing, and I can do this, and Asmirano Mardica diced in a Kuldegar deck. That's kind of fun. I think that Agatha and Asmo are one in the same. I don't know. Jason, I'm glad that your team's doing well. That's really exciting. Okay. All activated abilities. This is not an activated ability, so I think we're pretty good there. This Chrome Mox is not going to have anything imprinted underneath it. Uh... So I'm gonna decline this and then grape shot the Magus. Uh, oh, the, oh, you know what? That's right. I've seen Phyrexian uh, 
it's Dreadnought, right? Phyrexian Dreadnought? Or is it Phyrexian Devourer and Ballista? Okay. Um, are we going to be able to piece together a win here? Or am I just going to shuffle and figure things out? I think that this is a non-lethal... Uh, yeah, because I don't have the ability to pull back four mana after a guy as well, so... We're just going to pass the turn. Oh, exile the grape shot. I didn't actually realize that that a uh, card from a graveyard. Okay. Interesting. It's just also graveyard hate. I did turn their ancient tomb back on. Uh, Chalice of the void on one. Well, that's pretty good. Why not song? I was thinking that I could get lethal going on. Obviously, that's not the case anymore, but I was thinking that lethal was not that far away. Okay, so we can uh, song now, and I just don't cast any zeros. Or one drops. I think that's probably good enough. So let's get another black source. The underground sea. Black. Black. Colorless. Cast with bargain. Bargain away the chrome mox. Now I can song and uh, have a zero. Now, this is Undermine Break Trap, but Pyroblastable. We'll see if that's a thing they have. It doesn't look like it yet. So I get my trigger. Uh, Orcish Bowmaster. Okay, sure. That's going to be tough. We still... Oh, we don't have Veil of Summers. That's all right. We didn't draw anything that can be done this turn, so we are just going to be uh, moving along. Hmm. Okay, now I don't have any red mana. Uh, okay, you eat a Beseech the Mirror, that's fine. Kind of surprised you're not eating the, the Magus of the Moon putting counters on uh, another creature or something like that, but hmm, this is, oh, Taiga too. This is just Jund, Phyrexian Devourer, Goblin Engineer. Okay, so that tutors up some artifact. I don't know if it's, okay, Phyrexian Devourer. And I'm assuming that this means I am deceased. No, they need the, uh, they need a walking ballista in the graveyard. Okay. Oh, they just attack for lethal. You know what? Okay, cool. They do everything they needed to. Fantastic. Um, man, I'm not having a very good night. That's really too bad. I, um, that's okay. We're going to just play through it. We've got one more match. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our tokens. If you wanna keep track of things and not lose out on big opportunities to win games, then you should check out our token pack. Let me have Bryant tell you a little bit about it. I'll be right back. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Yes, you can elevate your combo game. It actually is really excellent. Um, the token pack does some pretty exceptional things. Um, 
The cauldron for yeah, the cauldron definitely ended up being lethal just for Axian Devourer exile X cards plus X plus X for target creature. Um and you're all good to go. So a little bit of a little bit of a onboard combo trick. Uh so yeah. We are one and three, that is true. We are going to try to get that two three, the two three fifty points back and just kind of move on. That's all you can do. And I mean, I think I'm pretty okay with Storm. It's just kind of been a, not the best night for me playing Storm, I guess. I don't know. I was, I've been playing some leagues cause I've got to get scenarios for infernal tutoring and it's been performing really well for me. Um, just not tonight. And it's just me as the pilot. So we're just gonna, we're gonna chalk it up to an off night and we're gonna keep moving on. Uh, woof, yeah, that is, woof, super dead. I agree. Um, that's all good. It was actually kind of a cool combo to see. I want to see if I can uh, find that in league results or something like that. If it's five would or something, uh, I might put that in the queue for the poll next week. I don't know. It kind of seems like a fun, fun mono. Well, it's actually jund, a jund combo deck. Soul Cauldron combo deck. Okay, we lost the die roll, so we're presumably going to be on the draw with an unkeepable hand. Uh, an orc army token in the token pack? Yeah, we do. Um, maybe for the next update, but that's going to be uh, maybe a couple years out. Unless you all buy them. If you buy them up real quick, then... We're all good. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a really clean, I'm gonna keep this, uh, really clean Empty the Warrens. Uh, and, oh, it top baited SCG Hartford. Ooh, okay, cool. I'm gonna have to take a look at that and see where things go. Well, I'm not gonna make goblins now. Hmm. Um, if I, I mean, if I draw a veil of summer, which I realized that I just bottomed, but I was on a different plan. Um, if I draw a veil of summer, then I have a protected galvanic relay. Uh, okay. Well, I'm not going to play directly into a blue, uh, a fair blue deck, presumably fair, at least a force of will deck. Right. Um, so I'm just going to wait. I have the ability to do that. And this looks like an Orcish Bowmasters. Ponder, okay. Well, I'm gonna play into the Orcish Bowmasters. I know, I know, but I think it'll be worth it. Bowmasters, go for it. Daisia, nope, not gonna happen. Um, all right. So I'll fall to 17 and well, those are good cards. Um, hmm. Next turn, I could do a lot. Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, at the very least, I can just like Okay, so seven, six. Okay, so I can actually get a um, a protected Gaia's will if I burning wish for a thought seize here. So that's kind of fun. I'm guessing this is soul type beans, and yeah, the wastelands is going to be interesting. Um, I hope that the Wasteland doesn't hit me. If it does, I still think I have enough mana to have a protected Gaia's Will line. I'm drawing a Beseech the Mirror, and what I'm going to do is... Um, there's the Wasteland, of course. So... Okay. They're brainstorming after they made their land drop. And we're passing. Okay. 
I'm going to, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I need seven mana. Burning Wish plus Thoughtseize is three, and then Beseech the Mirror is four. Mox Opal is my bargainable permanent. So I'm going to have everything through a daze, which is a potential card that our Sultai Beans opponent has. Um, so let's uh, let's do all of this and then hit the Burning Wish. Hmm, that resolved. Okay, so let's. Thought sees them. Brainstorm stifle. Well, uh, this is not a trigger, so I can just get brainstorm and then I can thought seize them again to get rid of the stifle. And I have protection for everything under the sun. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is sacrifice this right now so that I don't have to worry about holding control and forgetting about it later. So this is the Gaia's will. None of this can be stifled. And then I can... Oh, I can play an island. Yeah, neat. Forget about that. Um, and what I can do now is thought seize them and take the stifle. Cool. Beans eat your heart out. Turn three. Excellent. Um, so that was really nice. They thought that stifle was going to get there, and it's not. Definitely not going to. Um, okay, I like the Carpet of Flowers and I like the Besejus, even if they're just extra lands. We're going to take out Cabal Rituals. Games are going to go a little bit longer. And to that end, I'm going to take out Chrome Mox and Mox Opal. Carpets kind of fill that space. And yeah, four in, four out. Fairly simple. And if we end on a win against Sultai Beans, I, I don't actually know. Is it still like the top deck of the format? Um, it, I'm gonna reset my MTG Goldfish. It is Beanstalk Control, still number one, which is wild to have a control deck in the number one spot. But more power to them. Loving that for us to end the night on. I think that that's pretty okay. <laughs> We're just waiting on our opponent. Here we go. They, let's see, Newton, the worst thing about Stifle is when they Mystical Sanctuary for it again. Absolutely. If they Sanctuary Brains, if like they can double Stifle in a turn cycle, then yeah, absolutely. That's pretty tough. But I think I'm going to keep this hand. I get that it's kind of rough to Wasteland. Um, I, I'm pretty okay with this though. Uh, yeah, like the double stifle hand that kind of plays around discard um, can be kind of tough to beat. Ponder, island ponder keep. Okay. Where have I heard that before? Um, survey says another land. Yes, please. Now, I'm gonna get the Underground Sea um, instead of leaning into this Burning Wish right away. Uh, and that's just fine. Okay, this is not what I want. 
I'm going to, is this fine? Probably not. Yeah, this is not good enough. This is a little bit too much and the Chrome Mox doesn't do anything. Too much mana. Okay, fetch land is just fine. That's like the best thing I could have drawn if it was gonna be a, a land. I certainly didn't want two lands and a Chrome Mox. But enough to kind of work with Wasteland protection is just fine. So their first ponder, by the way, chose to shuffle. And then this ponder uh, chooses to not shuffle. And there's a Wasteland, okay. That's fine. We do have another land. We have two lands if Beseju ends up being a land drop to make. Veil of Summer, okay. <clears throat> Hmm, so what I can do is, ooh, they're not making a land drop. Okay, they've got a bunch of interaction. So here's something that I can end up doing. Uh, casting a Veil Summer and seeing if they interact. This reeks of Stifle. Um, I'm not going to play into that, but if they want, we can interact with the first stifle and see what happens. Now, if they daze it, they spell pierce it. Uh, well, that's not gonna be a stifle now. So what I'm gonna do is fetch and get a bayou or Taiga, Bayou is fine. And I'll fight over this uh, because the two extra draws is are gonna be interesting or we can, okay, we can get them to daze. Now that sets them back even further. And I'm okay with this for now because I have lands on the, on the battlefield and we have the same number of cards in hand. Um, I think this is just fine. So, Hmm. Not the greatest thing ever, but not terrible. We can just pass. Um, they had the, oh, I don't know if this is a one of spell pierce or not, or a two of days or whatever. They found land number two. Okay. I would like to galvanic relay at some point. I would not like to guy as well. That's not what I want to do. Um, is it going to be okay to suspend a will? Uh, hmm. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I've seen the two dazes. I, I've actually played beans before, uh, you know, Pokemoki's list and I like it a lot. I don't know if it's a scam deck, um, but it's kind of somewhere in the middle. It's a little, it's like a mid-range deck. It's a little bigger than tempo. It's a little faster than control. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what mid-range is. So, yeah. Uh, Bowmaster at the end of turn. They have a clock and five cards in hand. I am essentially just a galvanic relay away from taking over the game though, uh, which I'm really hoping for uh, soon. Ponder, okay. So what I think that I'm gonna do is, um, uh, I don't want to suspend a guy as well. That's a lot of turns to give my opponent, um, but it might be fine. In which case I kind of should have done it last turn. I might just, <clears throat> I might just go to discard and discard a beseech the mirror. I think that that's fine. Um, 
or a ponder. Am I ever casting this ponder? If I see a blue source, then that's fine. Okay, let's do, let's ditch this. Man, it's gonna be close. I, I wanna play around surgical extraction. That's the thing that I'm thinking of. And if I discard either Beseech or Burning Wish, then they can get me with surgical extraction. Um, Gaia's Will, obviously, if I find a Brainstorm, then this is like a live plan. And then the Ponder, it might just be the Ponder, which is too bad because I really want to cast it. Um, we're making choices and I have to either discard the Beseech the Mirror or the Gaia's Will. And those are my things that I'm doing. I'm gonna discard the Gaia's Will. I would need a second card to make this work, so we're just gonna we're just gonna play without it. And that's fine. And um, I'm not gonna think about like suspending it because I still can echo. Uh, I get that there's two bowmasters in play. I get that, but we can echo at some point and win with a guy as well. So I, I think that that's reasonable. Um, okay, so this is four. Five, six, I would be at four. Um, what I can do is Chrome Mox imprint a Burning Wish. Let's Burning Wish for a relay. This might get interacted with. But I want to play around days. Okay, and uh, this is currently a three turn clock. Now, if they have an additional Bowmaster, then that kind of makes things tough. But um, at the moment, my plan is to re like have access to my relay the turn before I die. Um, that's the goal here. So right now I'll go to six and then I'll relay and go to two and then, uh, we'll see where things go from there. Ugh. I was really hoping for, you know, other castable cards, but a relay for two is where we are. It's not pretty. Not pretty at all. And they can just like days one force the other and then, uh, or I just hit a Bloodstained Mire and a Burning Wish. Okay, well I've had plenty of those. I would like uh, some mana, please. I don't know. Uh, this is kind of just us drawing fairly poorly. Um, I might have prioritized some things a little bit differently had I been thinking through the long route. Uh, but here we go. Now I feel like I have to brainstorm into their seven card hand and hit a Veil of Summer. There's two gone already. Um, this is game two. I think we have a game three, don't we? Okay. Yeah, this is game. Th this we are we are getting into a decider. So Jason, we're not one four yet. Uh, let's submit this deck list and try one more time. And um, let's see. Let's see how being on the play makes a difference. We are going to be on the play here. And this is not going to be a capable hand. I'll mulligan this one. And I don't hate this one. You can put back Beseju. Um, <clears throat> like... 
broadcasting a song of creation is not the end of the world. Um, they have Force of Vigor. This is a card that they have access to. Maybe I'm going to keep this hand. Um, and it's either putting back the Beseju or putting back the Song of Creation. And I think that it's going to be the Beseju. Yeah. Um, this is just a potential plan that, depending on my brainstorm, I can sculpt two or decide that that's not something that I want and put it back with my brainstorm and shuffle it away. So that's kind of where I'm sitting. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And survey says Island Ponder. No. Okay. I don't know if this is another stifle or not. We'll find out eventually, I guess. Um, I'm not going to play out the brainstorm right now. If they end up playing an Orcish Bowmasters at some point, then I might be able to... Uh, oh, okay. Well, there's the Lorien Revealed. So this is a really excellent time to brainstorm now. And I get that this could be a brainstorm into a wasteland, for example, but I can get the Underground Sea and kind of... Uh, insulate myself against that with the other one in hand. That is a lot of burning wishes. Those are all going back. This relay is nice. Um, I need some more zeros to make it work. Now, now we can see where things go. Um, they got an underground sea. And we're going to take a look at what their plan is. Wasteland. Okay. Yep. It is the burning wish match, that's for sure. So let's you know what I I did end up playing around stifle at the beginning and then not at the end, but they didn't have it. Okay. Oof. Drew a burning wish anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, now here's the question. Do I... Now, a surgical on burning wish is not the end of the world because I have tendrils of agony. What I can do is burning wish for uh, Thoughtseize, potentially, right? Um and kind of set up a multi-turn relay at some point. Yeah, Newton, we've got plenty of burning wishes and I think that's what I'm gonna do. Like they could daze this, they could spell pierce this. Um, having multiple is just, okay, we set them back a land drop. They wastelanded me, didn't really take me off of that much mana development other than the fact that I can't cast this relay but I don't want to cast this relay yet. And we saw a different land. So we know that they have two lands in hand. So they have five other cards. Dark Ritual. Okay. I'm not going to relay for three. Um, I don't think that that's my game. I want to relay for more. And what I would like to do is, okay, there's the trop that we knew about. What I would like to do is get to a way, a spot where I can burning wish and relay. And that did it, right? Yeah, so this can be a relay for four. Uh, that's an acceptable relay amount for me. I will get the additional Red source. And let's cast a Burning Wish. And this is representing relay mana already, so they're incentivized to interact with this. Uh, jokes on them. Yeah, I already have a relay in hand. 
So I got an extra storm out of them, uh, which is great. And now I have a relay for five and I am one mana away from this song of creation. I think I'm in an okay spot. Another relay is not bad. Brainstorm, Veil of Summer, Tendrils, eh, okay. And another Veil of Summer. I, I could be better. Definitely could be better. So is this a, an Orcish Bowmaster? Okay, so this is an Orcish Bowmaster. Um, That's all good. And so what I can do is just lead on a Veil of Summer. Um, yeah, Jared, absolutely. That's double Bowmaster. They have three cards in hand and I know one of them. Oh no, they just played the Underground Sea. Did they? Yeah. Um, okay, so three unknowns in hand. I have two Veil of Summers. I would love to draw a green source, but that didn't happen. So let's see about what happens with this Veil of Summer. I'm assuming we're, go oh, we're not gonna fight over it. Wow. Uh, interesting. I think I have to start on a brainstorm and I think that it's gonna be off of the underground sea. I would like to end up with, uh, I don't know what I would like to end up with, but I, we've got to start on the cantrip. So, uh, yeah, Newton, they've got, they've got some stank on these relays, which is too bad because like relay is an ex exceptionally good card. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna put back Song of Creation and Otzi's. What I can do is fetch and uh, brainstorm again. And then I have a card that I can put back that I don't care about. Um, really need something good to happen off of this brainstorm because I am going to end up being uh, dead on board. I'm already pretty darn close. This is 10, I'm at 11, so. Yeah, Relay is definitely not an option anymore. Ooh, getting rid of my Burning Wish. They did have Surgical Extraction. Uh, okay, so what I can do here is let Surgical Extraction happen. That's a shuffle, and then I can Volcanic Island use my volcanic island to brainstorm and then this will be my shuffle for brainstorm and then if i i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna find um i need to find amazing things oh no no uh, i pressed it already that's fine that was my bad I, got, I just jumped the gun. I thought I had one more point of... Uh, okay. Well, that was not the greatest league. I hope that you all learned something about what not to do in specific instances of thinking about Veil vale of Summer as the one ring and just recognize that Storm is kind of hard and nobody's Bryant Cook other than Bryant Cook. We try our best and honestly, it's a good learning experience. I'm gonna follow back this league and I'm gonna make some notes. It's gonna be a tough league to rewatch personally. Uh, I'm gonna make some mistakes and I'm gonna make sure that I call myself out on them. And if you want to make sure to do that in the comments down below, constructively. And then I will see you in the polls to next Thursday's stream and maybe I'll have that Agatha Soul Cauldron on the docket if I find that list from that SCG um, Hartford win or top eight excuse me uh, platinum we are going to end on the league we just play one league every Thursday but it is good to see you in chat um, so thank you all 
for hanging out with me this Thursday. I really appreciate your time. I will see you in the next one. Have a good night.